Hello everybody, my name's Andy Shepherd, and I'm the author of the Boy Who Grew Dragon series, which has been wonderfully illustrated by Sarah Ogilvy. So my story is all about a little boy called Thomas who discovers a secret, and that secret is that not all dragons come from eggs. Some of them grow on trees, a very special tree called a dragon fruit tree. So I'd like to read you my story, The Boy Who Grew Dragons, and I'm going to read you a chapter every day. And every time I read a chapter, I'm going to share another little dragon that lives with me in my house. So today, the story comes to you with this little dragon, which is the first dragon that I ever bought when I started writing the story. And since then, I've collected a fair few. So keep your eyes open for more dragons coming soon. Okay, let's get started. When people ask me what we grow in Grandad's garden, I think they expect the answer to be cucumbers, tomatoes or runner beans. I don't think they expect the answer to be dragons. But there it is, we grow dragons. And I can tell you this, they're a lot more trouble than cucumbers. Things cucumbers do not do. Poo in your dad's porridge. <laughs> Singe your eyebrows. Make a really cosy nest by shredding all your mum's alphabetically ordered recipes. Leave your pants, the embarrassing ones covered in diggers, hanging from the TV aerial. Chase your cat. Drop cabbages on your cat. Try and ride your cat like a rodeo bull. Wake you up at 4am every morning by digging razor sharp claws into your forehead. Ow! Set light to your toothbrush while it's still in your mouth. Of course, they also don't have scales that ripple and shimmer like sunlight on the sea, or have glittering eyes that can see right into the heart of you, or settle on your shoulder with their tail curled around warming your neck and their hot breath tickling your ear. Nope, none of these are things you can expect from a cucumber. Well, not any cucumbers I've ever come across. Maybe a mutant radioactive space cucumber, but not your average garden variety. But dragons? Well, they're a whole other story. So, who wants to grow dragons? Daft question, yeah. I mean, seriously, who in their right mind would say no? Not me, that's for sure, and not you by the looks of it. But if you want to grow dragons, you need to know what you're getting into. Sure, they're fiery, fantastical and dazzling, but dragons are not all fun and games, not by a long shot. And it's not just the fire and the flammable poo. Oh no. Which is why, my dragon-seeking desperados, I'm writing all this down so at least you can go into it with your eyes open. Because believe me, you'll need them to stay wide, wide open. Chapter 1. Battle of the Bongo. It started about a year ago, and it was all Grandad's fault. Well, his and the jam tarts. I was just licking the last of it off my fingers when he said, we should grow our own chipstick. Jam tarts, I asked. Raspberries, he grinned. Then we could make our own jam for Nana's tarts. We could mix them up too. Strawberry and blackberry, gooseberry and raspberry. Just think of the possibilities. Delicious. It did make a pretty good picture in my head. A vast plate-sized jam tart with different coloured sections like a multi-topping multi pizza. And more too, Grandad went on, before I could dive further into the jammy dream. Radishes, beans, onions, cauliflowers, you name it, we could grow it. Suddenly, I wasn't so sure it was a good idea. Strawberry and cauliflower jam. Ooh. Anyway, I had enough fruit and vegetables to deal with, what with mum shoveling in my five a day. I mean, she even sneaked dried fruit into perfectly good flapjacks, as if I wouldn't notice. But Grandad wasn't one to let go of an idea once it had fluttered down and settled. So on Saturday morning, there we were at the end of his garden, up to our ears in mud, digging away at what looked to me like a monster jungle. In fact, I was beginning to realise why Mum had offered me provisions for my trip to the Amazon. Without the nettles and brambles, my grandparents' garden was probably half as big again and ran all the way down to the fields beyond. 
I've been wanting to get stuck into this since we moved in, Grandad told me, pausing to catch his breath. But with one thing and another, I just don't seem to have found the time. I stopped digging and scraped my spade across a clod of mud. I know you have no idea what he was talking about, but I did. I knew exactly what he meant by one thing and another. Sorry, I muttered, because I really was. He rested his arms on his spade and leaned towards me. Now, there's something you should know about my granddad. He twinkles. That might sound weird, but he does. There's a phrase to have a twinkle in your eye, which means to be bright or sparkling with delight. Well, my granddad has the biggest twinkle of anyone I've ever known. And right then, he was shining that twinkle down on me till I felt its warmth flooding every bit of my body. It was like I'd sat in front of the toastiest marshmallow toasting fire. Now then, Chipstick, how many times have I told you? What's the deal with families? I smiled. They stick together. Exactly, he grinned. Not unlike jam tarts. Now get digging. So I did. The worst thing to dig up was this stuff Grandad called bongleweed. It wound itself around everything, clinging to roots, shoots and shrubs for dear life. Soon, I was in an almighty tug of war, boy against plant, and for a moment there it really looked as if the evil bongle plant overlord might win. But I dug and scraped and pulled and heaved until all that was left was a patch of earth and the strangest looking plant I'd ever seen. It was taller than me and my blistered hands would have only made it halfway round the trunk. Except it was hard to see the trunk because of all these long green cactus arms that draped down. Looks like a giant upturned mop head, declared Grandad. But, you know, green and spiky and knobbly too. Bizarrely, he wasn't far wrong. Sprouting from some of the cactus arms were vivid yellow and orange tendrils like bursts of flames. And on each one of those nestled a fruit. Some were large and red and looked fit to burst. Others were small and green and looked new, but all of them had weird, spiky, pineapple-like leaves. They were so unlike anything I'd ever seen in our fruit bowl at home, I found myself reaching up to touch them. I noticed one of the smaller fruits had already turned red, but the tendril it was attached to was being pushed down by the weight of a few larger fruits hanging above. I gently lifted it and moved it to one side to give it some more space. And as I did, I saw something even weirder. Hey, Grandad, I called. It's glowing, like those fireflies, do you remember? Dad said it was bio loony nonsense or something. He said some jellyfish do it too. Bioluminescence, Grandad corrected. He peered at the red fruit and rubbed a finger across it. Reckon it's just mould, he said. Come on, Chipstick, I'm famished. But what is it? I asked. Grandad wrinkled his nose. No idea, but we can pull it out tomorrow. I looked at the red spiky fruit that was glowing in my hands, and whether I pulled it a little too hard or it just chose that moment to fully ripen, one way or another, the fruit dropped from the vivid tendril. Looking at it in my palm, somehow I didn't feel like throwing it into the bonfire pile, so I tucked it under my arm before following Grandad inside. Later, when I got home, I put the pineapple sprouting fruit on my desk and typed strange spiky fruit into the search box on my computer. Pictures popped up and there it was, right next to durian, which smell like poo apparently, so it was dead lucky we didn't find those. No, here it was, size of a mango, red, spiky pineapple-like leaves, definitely what I had sitting in front of me. I clicked on the picture and read the caption. Pitaya, dragon fruit. Yup. Now, it's easy for you because you know there's about to be a dragon, but I was clueless back then. I mean, if someone gives you a fairy cake, you don't expect Tinkerbell to pop out, do you? So I didn't jump up and scream, whoopee, I'm getting a dragon. I just left it on the desk and went downstairs for tea. And that probably wasn't the best idea, you know, because of what happened next. So I hope you've enjoyed the first chapter of The Boy Who Grew Dragons and come back soon to find out what happens next in the story.
Bye for now.